shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. With Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
is a real God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together. Give him praise for being a real God. Hallelujah. There's nobody like him. He's the same yesterday. Hallelujah. Today and forever. He's a real God. Hallelujah. We bless his holy name. Hallelujah. We're going to ask that you stand to your feet as we go before the throne of grace. Going to a real God. Hallelujah. There's no problem with he, he can't handle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. 
For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he said himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to read that one more time. And ye shall, hallelujah, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord's word is blessed. Hallelujah. We thank God for the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 His word shall not return unto him void. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will remain. Ah, glory, 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 glory. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. No matter what we're going through, he's still good. Hey, nah, Shabbat. Hallelujah. He never changes. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. Hallelujah. We can stand on it. He's our foundation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's that time again. Let's give God praise. It's offering time. Hallelujah. He loves a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. Are you cheerful? Are you thanking God you can dig down in your purse and in your bank account and give? You have something in there, right? Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. We thank God. This is a form of worship as well. This is a form of worship. We're worshiping God in our giving. He has allowed us to have 90, 100% so we can give 10. He allowed something to come in. Hallelujah. And so something must go back out to him. How can, how can we rob God? How can you rob him? Tides and offerings. Come on, scholars. If you're not paying your tithes and offerings, you're robbing them. I didn't say it. It's in the book. It's in the book. If you get upset, get upset with Jesus and God. He wrote it. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to do how we're going to give. Giving this shall be given unto me. How? 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 Shall who? Shall man give in our bosom? So if you want to receive, you must give. But we're giving it as a worship unto the Lord. So receive our praise. And we thank you in advance for your liberality and giving. Your giving helps to keep this house in order, keep the lights on, the air conditioning, the heat. We do a lot of repairs here. We're ministering in video and audio and virtually. So all of your tithes and offers are being used that way. Hallelujah. So give God praise that you are helping the gospel be spread today. Receive our praise team in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Song says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, yes he is good. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks unto, unto, the, unto the Lord. For he, for is, he is good, yes he is good. Oh, give, oh, give thanks unto, unto the, the Lord. For he, he is good, yes he is good. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is. Oh, he is. 
Somebody say many things. Many things you were on a earth. holy king. A holy king, a carpenter. But you are the living. Say awesome ruler. Awesome ruler. Gentle redeemer. Say God with us. Yeah. God with us. The living truth. What a friend, what a friend we have in you. Come on, we're going to say that again. We say awesome rule, awesome rule, gentle redeemer. Say God with us, yeah. And what a friend. Jesus, 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 that's what we call you, that's what we call you, major boy, major boy, but on a tree, you died, you died to save, save in the end. End. That's it. come on, lift it up, come on, we already here, come on, say it, say Jesus, 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 that's what we call you. You 
are the living word. Praising him. He's a worthy God. He's a great God. Come on, come on and bless him. Shine hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet as our bishop comes to us. Can everyone stand to your feet? Hallelujah. I love calling that great name. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Hallelujah. Every time going to confess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm good. Praise him. You may be seated. Thank you, choir. Thank you, praise team. We enjoyed the praise team. Jesus, that living word. He died to set us free. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? It's just a blessing. You know, we're so privileged to have this kind of anointing here in this sanctuary. That's a blessing. You know, it's the anointing that destroys the yokes. And we thank God for this anointing. Ron, good to see you. God bless you. And amen. We're praying for you. I want to send out a special prayer for two for Otis Seawood Jr. Amen. We want to pray for him. Amen. He is, uh, I think he in some way had gotten cancer. But we want to thank God that he caught it early caught it early so we thank God for that it's just a blessing to be blessed it's good to see brother Doug in the house amen and God is bringing us all back together and since the Richardson we thank God for all of you coming in here you know I have been so inundated with just scripture the Lord has put me in Leviticus, and then I went to Revelation, and all kinds of things are going on because of what I see going on in the world. And today I want to talk about the God of the future, the God that he holds the future. 
And of course, we need to be aware of what's going on. One of the things that is so blessed by us who being saved and get a chance to really get up under some good teaching, Amen. some good anointing, is that Jesus said unto us, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But not everybody knows this. Some people who have ears, but they can't hear. They have eyes, but they can't see. They have a heart, but they don't understand. You and I have been given the ability to understand what God is doing. What's going on in Israel, I'll be talking about that in the Bible class. One of the reasons why God chose Israel and what's going on right now in Israel. If you notice, they were sending out all kinds of drones to attack Israel. But because of its alliance, not only just with America, but with NATO in general, they actually shot down all of those drones that were coming after them. See, God going to protect Israel. <clears throat> he promised that he was going to do that. In Abraham, in the 12th chapter, he said, I'm going to bless them that bless you. I'm going to curse them that curse you. That is something that we talked about in the Bible. I want to just kind of put things in perspective uh, because, again, we see that everything is kind of unfolding. The thing that Jesus said is going to happen. Remember I told you about the Olivet Discourse, Matthews 24 and 25, those chapters we start to see that what Jesus says is starting to come to pass. It just says to us, it's an alert system. So we need to be aware of what's really getting ready to come home. See, God is the God of time. Yeah. And whether you know it or not, the time is ticking. Yeah. God has set a time when everything is going to end. Yeah. And I want to talk to you concerning this time frame because there will be a time when that time will be no more. We're going to go into eternity and there will be no need for time. But because we are in this dispensation of time, God is saying to us, this is the time that you need to get things together. Because you're going to spend eternity somewhere. Either in heaven or in hell, you're going to be somewhere. Because when man became a living soul, he became an immortal being. Which means you're going to spend eternity somewhere. So it's up to you to make the choice. You, you have to make a choice as to where, whether you want to, where you want to spend eternity. I made my decision. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I made up in my mind to do that. That's why I want to share with you, especially when you, you have a family, teach your young children about what is to come. All this stuff is going to pass away. This material stuff is going to pass away. So they need to have something that's more eternal. The things that we see are temporal, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And so that's what we want to do. And Jesus came on the scene, lived about 37 years, and decided that he was going to go back to the, to the Father. But he was telling us, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on this earth where moth and rust is going to destroy it. But lay for yourselves treasures in heaven where there are eternal blessings. So today I want to introduce you to the word of God that I'm sure that you are familiar with in the book of Isaiah chapter number 46. And we want to talk about the God of the future. And I want to share with you what I believe he has given me. <clears throat> we we'll always thank God for our musicians. Uh, amen. Who are doing a mar marvelous job. We thank God for them. And I want to thank you for your donations. The ones that are keeping them here. Amen. We want to make sure that you all understand that in order for us to have a quality service, we got to have some quality giving. Amen. It, 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 it makes sense to me. And you cannot get, you know, something uh, at Macy's and, and then <clears throat> there's a big difference between Macy's and Dollar Tree. 
Yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I want to share, share with this. this. The word of God, we're talking about the God of the future. And remember uh, in, in verse number 9 and 10, this is Isaiah. Now, this is a book that was written by the prophet Isaiah. Some believe it was written over 700 years, uh, some even eight. Some of the theologians might say even 800 years prior to Christ's coming. But he tells them in verse 9, Remember the former things of old. I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. This is really something that's telling us that he is a God of the future. That God is telling us that everything that is going to happen from Genesis to Revelation, I'm aware of it. When you have that kind of information, you know what the end is going to be. You know how it began and how it's going to end. One of the things that is so important is that I guess God, the things that he revealed to us concerning even Satan. See, there's, there, there's something that we have to be made aware of. It, that sin didn't begin with Adam and Eve. Sin began with Satan. And it began in heaven. That's why they call it the mystery of iniquity. How can somebody be in heaven and mess up? And that's exactly what happened. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. The minute that he was sinning or had it in his heart, the Bible says that Satan was cast out of heaven. Because when we look at the book of Genesis, you got to wonder, where did the serpent come from? That influenced Eve to eat from the fruit. Well, where did he come from? Well, he was in heaven. If you don't understand, and that's why it's so important, God revealed this to us so we'll know that there are spiritual beings that are trying to influence you to rebel against God. Paul even says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, in spiritual wickedness, in high places. I believe some of the demonic stuff that's going on now with Israel and Iraq and all those, that's being spiritually, I think, uh, um, spiritually ignited. And, and, and of course, Paul tells Timothy that in the last days, he says, the spirit speaketh expressly. In the latter days, some gonna depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Jesus tells us in the parables how that happens. Some, when he says there are four types of soil, four types of individuals, even within the church, I think sometimes, there is a one to four ratio. Some people hear it. Some people are like the one on the wayside. Some are like stony. That is, that they go for a little while but because they don't have no roots. They don't stay in the church long enough. Then he says that when the test come, they go. There are those who have the thorny. The thorny means that it goes for a while, but the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of this life choke up the word of God and they become unfruitful. See, the devil's going to offer you material stuff. You know, a lot of times people are killing each other over material stuff. All of that stuff that they get they ain't going to take it with them. Brothers and sisters, the eternal things that we're going to be having are really the things that God has said. And he gives us evidence of what's going to happen. That's what the Olivet Discourse is all about. Since things started with the devil, and I'm going to just share with you concerning that in the book of Isaiah. In that 14th chapter, in the 14th chapter of Isaiah, one of the things you'll find and what happened, and this is how it all began. 
from Genesis to Revelation. See, the devil two books that the devil really doesn't like. Genesis, which tell him <laughs> how everything got together, and Revelation, because he's going to tell you how things end up. And they know exactly where he's going. But he doesn't want you to know that. So he gives you all types of other things to distract you. The devil gives you all kinds of things to distract you. And let me just say this. I think you need to curtail some of your activity on TikTok and Instagram and other social media platforms that are distracting you from God. Rather than buying your child some of the technological things, what about sitting down at the table and talk about the Lord Jesus Christ? I think that would be great, don't you? Because they need to know what's really going on. What's happening in the world today is demonic. There's a lot of demonic things that are going on and all of that, but the Antichrist is soon to come. And he's going to be able to deceive the entire world, according to the book of Revelation. He deceived the whole world. That's the ninth chapter of Revelation. But we have to realize, brothers and sisters, since you and I have been informed, you and I know the mysteries of the kingdom. We're in the dispensation now called grace. In this dispensation, brothers and sisters, the church is the thing that is the light of the world. And what is the most powerful thing in the church? It's the gospel. Yes. Now, the gospel is not just going to be preached by us. Yes. There are angels, according to the Revelation, chapter 14, verse 6, there is going to be angels preaching the everlasting gospel. So that the Olivet Discourse that he talked about, where there's going to be all the ones who are going to be preaching, it's 24 and 14 of, of uh, Matthew's, where he tells it that this gospel must be preached in all the nations. That's when he said the end is going to come. But it's not just going to be people physically preaching the gospel. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 tells us that's going to be an angel preaching the everlasting gospel for every nation and tongue and everything. So everybody go hear the word of God. Everybody go hear the gospel. Well, let's look at this. Let's look at this 14th chapter here, verse 12 of Isaiah. This is how this all began. And Satan don't want you to know this, but in verse 12, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did it weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the throne stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pits. I want you to notice something. One of the things is, is that people don't realize how pride is. Notice how many times he says, I will. If you look at verse 13, he says, in that heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt myself. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. That's two I wills. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. That's number three. And he says in verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Four. And number five, I will be like the most high. He had the God beside himself. Up in heaven. That's in Ezekiel 28. It tells us all about how he was perfect in beauty, et cetera, et cetera. God gives us this revelation about Satan so that we don't get the big head. What brought him down was pride. Pride going before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. He's a God of the future, so he's letting us know what is going to happen. 
so that you can now begin to tell from, from Genesis to Revelation in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. That's something that we need to know the origin of where things began. This is the origin of Satan. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. And let's look at this. Now, even in the kingdom, when, the, when Jesus comes back, you're going to find out that there's going to be a very pristine environment such as it was with Adam and Eve. When Jesus comes back and rules a thousand years, some of us will have glorified bodies, other, other, others won't. And there are going to be people who are going to be dying during that, <clears throat> during that period. However, those who do die, they're saying they will be considered babies dying at 100 years old. That's in the Bible. It's in there. Trust me. Now, I want you to look at this 28th chapter of Ezekiel. And we're looking at something called the, actually, uh, when we look at, this is talking about the uh, king of Tyre. In verse number 11, he says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. He's really talking about Satan here. Son of the morning, or Lucifer. Verse 13, 13, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. Thy workmanship of thy tab tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Now this is talking about Satan was created. He's not all powerful. He was created. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked into walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in all thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. And by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones. Verse 17, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings and they may behold thee. Look at what happens. One of the things is his pride is dangerous. Very dangerous. But also beauty. He, he was bedecked with all kinds of precious, precious stones. And I could imagine when he looked upon himself and saw all, he said, y'all need to worship me. See, Satan want to be worshiped too. That's one of the things that he told Jesus. It all, I, those three times that you remember when he told him, and look, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Then he takes him up to a pinnacle. He said, if you just cast yourself down, the angel's going to catch you. You don't have to worry about it. Then finally, he offers him all the kingdoms of the world. So he said, he can't offer you nothing but material stuff. He can't offer you eternal life. That's all he can offer you is material stuff. That's why this age of materialism is killing people because they think they're going to take something with them. You ain't taking nothing with you. Naked you came here and naked you only. It's certain you ain't taking nothing with you. You know the best thing you can do is to write true people, treat people right. Because God is concerned about how we treat one another 
more than about what we accumulate yeah. on this, in this world. Yeah. So you want to make sure you do the right thing with the people. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. That's the golden rule. Yeah. We want to, I want to show you because first and foremost, you need to understand that this is how things started. Yeah. And so God said, I'm going to tell you how things are going to happen. I'm going to give you the origin of things and I'm going to tell you how things going to end up. So what does that mean? That means I got some choices I can make. Since I'm dealing with time, I have some choices I can make. And I hope you make the right choices. It's so easy to make the wrong choices. Because you think because you haven't had, and let me just say this, brother, godliness with contentment is great gain. If you never get you one of those matches in Beverly Hills or whatever. Brothers and sisters, as long as you got a head, I mean a, a roof over your head, as long as you got some food to eat, some clothes to put on, you need to give God some praise just for that. And a reasonable portion of your health and strength, you better give God some praise. You never know what tomorrow is going to hold. So learn how to give God some praise in the right, right in, in, where, where, where he has blessed you. And be content with whatsoever he has blessed you with. You know, and there are certain things, brothers and sisters, when we talk about the origin and we're talking about the God of the future, what God is telling you, I'm going to give you some time. See, right now, there's a door open that no man can shut. Nobody can shut it. This is the greatest time in the world to be here on this planet because of what Jesus has done. Man messed up. Jesus sent his only, God sent his only son to straighten out what was messed up. And all he has to, he has to do is believe on him. You don't have to be trying to do a whole lot of calisthenics. You don't have to be a whole lot of this, that, and the other. All you got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you can be saved. I know it sounds simple, but God, the, the gospel is not that hard. All you got to do is believe on him. And there is then therefore no condemnation. Nobody can condemn you for believing, believing on Jesus Christ. I'm glad for grace. I'm glad that I'm saved in the age that I'm saved in. Because brothers and sisters, I don't have to worry about the law. You know how many laws that they had that they couldn't do this and this, that, and other? I guess that's why he put me in the book of Leviticus. They had all kinds of laws. They had the women couldn't, uh, couldn't was, if they were to get pregnant or have babies, or uh, things along that line. They couldn't even come back in the camp sometimes for 66 days. And if you had a boy, it was 30 days. I said, my God. But those were in, that was up under the law. You don't want to get it back up under no law. They're already fighting abortion right now. <laughs> Praise God. But thank God for grace. Thank God for a God of the future. And he's telling you, brothers and sisters, this is what's going to happen. So I'm going back now to the Olivet Discourse in the 24th chapter of the book of Matthews and we're going to close this out because I want you to understand God gives us the origin of things and he's also telling us what's going to happen in the end times. It would be good for us to know that since this thing is going to happen, the question is what manner of person I ought to be? considering that I do have a soul. And let me just say this, parents. You that have children, teach them the word of God so that they can learn, they can live, and you can see them again. And because they can, I just read just recently, a young girl, eight years old, was shot and killed. Eight years old. And they was out on, just out on the porch. And it probably was game-related. And all these things... And believe me, God is requiring the blood of all those folks that have been shot and killed. God is requ requiring the blood of those individuals. And if they do not repent, they're going to end up in hell. You can't miss both. You're going to either go to hell or you're going to heaven. Ain't no purgatory. Let me just rule that out right now. 
There's no such thing as purgatory where somebody gonna be prayed out. No, you ain't prayed out. As it is, what's to die? After that is gonna be the judgment. So this is the time where you can confess to God, and you know, and because He came to, to to correct what was wrong. Everybody in here, like I said, we're under construction. God is telling us, look, we got to get some things together. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the Holy Ghost because it's working in me. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I couldn't do it on my own. But when the Holy Ghost came, I had the strength and I had the power to do the things that God called me to do. In the 24th chapter of the book of Matthews, which is called the Olivet Discourse, this is where he began to ask, uh, the disciples asked him uh, concerning the end of the world. There were three questions that they asked him. That is found in verse number three. This is verse number three. He answered these questions. The end is going to come because the God of time is saying it is going to wind up. There is a timetable and there is a clock that is ticking that is telling us things are getting closer to doom. Here are the questions. There were three questions that were asked. Verse 3. And has he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Number one, the question was, tell us when these things are going to be, because Jesus was telling us, Telling them that that there will be a verse number two. See that you not, see you not all these things. Very last say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be torn down. Talking about the temple, and that happened according to history. According to the history, that was a way. Even though they were perfectly uh, aligned with those blocks and everything, there was a way that they were able to dislodge those large blocks and not one of those stones were left upon another. That's history. So that that thing happened already. But then he asked the question of what shall be the sign of thy coming? Well that's where we are right now. We got a lot of signs of the coming of the Lord. Well he goes on to answer them and he says unto them take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 4. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. We hear that right now. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diver places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. And that word sorrow in the Greek means birth pains. That means that it's going to intensify. Every woman in here that had a child knows what it means when we talk about the birth pains. Sometimes there'll be some false pains. You thought the baby was coming and it didn't show up. But it's the point when that baby is coming you feel that, it, that pain, that pushing. And somebody tell you, push! So that the baby can come out. And I've heard some of them when I was in the hospital I heard some of them screaming. Because the pain was excruciating. What Jesus is saying to us, and I want to, I want to make this clear, brothers and sisters, that that's just the beginning of sorrow. What we see in climate change is going to intensify. It's not just going to be one thing, but pestilences is going to intensify. Earthquakes are going to intensify. I would not be surprised if we saw some of the kind of climatic changes in, in this world going to intensify this year. We already saw a solar eclipse. But things are going to intensify 
Because when we look at the book of Zechariah, he tells that the moon is going to turn into blood. There are going to be some things that are happening on this, this planet that is going to, I mean, terrify folks. That's why I'm saying I'm glad I'm saved. Because I won't be here with all of these things. Talk about the Olivet Discourse. Because he says, now that's the first thing that's going to happen. He said, what's going to be the sign of your coming? Well, this is one of the things you can look for. Look for the earthquakes. They just had one in Haiti. They just had one in, I think it was Japan. Tsunamis are going crazy. We talk about floods, but there's a lot of things that are intensifying, and then the thing you can do about it. Because like I said, with Mother Nature, you, God will forgive us, Mother Nature won't. So whatever we mess up, I'm going to tell you something, mother, when, mother, when Mother Nature is, is, is itching, she's going to scratch. And she scratched real hard. That's what we're experiencing. Now, Jesus said these things are going to happen. He's the God of the future. He's telling us these things are going to happen and beware. When these things start happening, you better run to church. Ask God to save you. Ask God to deliver you. These things are going to happen and they're going to intensify. I pray God makes sure that the angels can't run about me. I need some protection. I need some help. And it's time for us to recognize things are changing. This world is changing. This world is changing. We see a lot of things going on. He goes on to tell them. Then shall they, uh, uh, verse, uh, verse 9, then shall they deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now I'm going to just say that there are certain times where God is switching from the Jews to the Gentiles. When he talks about these first things, what's going to be the sign of your coming? See, Jesus Christ is coming. When he's coming, there's some things that are going to happen, and he's telling us, I want you to be sober. I want you to be vigilant. I want you to watch, because these things are going to happen. He tells Peter, Peter, tell them these things are going to happen. Once they, you start seeing these things, he said, look up. Your redemption is drawing nigh. In other words, the Lord is on his way back. Now there are going to be a time during the time of the tribulation after the church is raptured up. And I believe the church is going to be raptured up according to Revelation chapter 4. He says, come up hither. After you see that after in the Revelation, you don't see the church anymore. Thank God for the church. Now is your time. Now is your time to get saved. Now is your time to repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. For the remission of sin, let God fill you with the Holy Ghost. What does the Holy Ghost do? It's going to show you things to come. The Holy Ghost is going to testify about Jesus. That's one of the reasons why you need the Holy Ghost. You got to have the Holy Ghost now just to be made aware of what's going on. The devil is here to deceive you. But if you get the Holy Ghost, it's your alert system. It's your warning system. When you get the Holy Ghost, you can't be deceived. That's why Jesus said, it's expedient for you that I go away. If I don't go away, the comforter will not come. I don't know why folks fight the Holy Ghost. They ain't nothing but the devil because he doesn't want you to have the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost comes and it resides in you and it comes to abide forever. You need the Holy Ghost. I know I can't. There's certain things I can't even pray for. Sometimes I don't even know how to pray. But the Holy Ghost helped me pray, to, and it prays according to the will of God. Yeah, I want the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I need the Holy Ghost. Without me, he says, you can do nothing. And I realize that. And I realize that. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. When you are all in a whole lot of pain, sometimes you don't want to, you don't want to read the Bible. Sometimes you don't feel like praying. I'm going to tell you like it is. I know what I went through. And let me just say this. When you get to a point where you're hurting and you can't hardly open up your Bible, you better have something that kind of alert you. When the Spirit come in like a flood, you better be glad you got the Holy Ghost that lift up a standard against them. And I know that one of the things I do know that the Holy Ghost prays when I don't feel like praying. I can sometimes just get to speaking in tongues and when the devil be trying to get me depressed, 
Man, the Holy Ghost just kicked right on in and said, no, you're going to make it, Doc. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. That's why you need to have the Holy Ghost. And it's to you, it's to your children, and as many as the Lord your God shall call. Tell them about it. Don't neglect to tell them about the Holy Ghost. It's so important. Well, I, I, I'm getting excited up here. But one of the things I want you to be aware of is the God of the future is telling us time is winding down. The clock is ticking. This world, as we know it, is going to perish. Look at 2 Peter. Look at 2 Peter. I'm going to jump over here to 2 Peter. And we'll close this out. But if you look at 2 Peter, this is God of the future. These are his disciples that were with him, that walked with him. Peter was on the day of Pentecost preaching the gospel. But in 2 Peter, let's look at 2 Peter. I want to look at the, I want to look at the third chapter of 2 Peter. Here's the, the, the day of the Lord is coming, brothers and sisters. I'm just trying to alert you. I don't want you to get to a point where you lose out. Because none of these material things that the devil is offering you is worth anything. I want me a nice car. I want me a nice house. I want that. God has given me that. But I really want eternal life. I, I really want to stay with him. I want to. I, I want to see what that's going to be like. Here's what he says to him in the third chapter. Now these are scoffers. In the, I'm going to read start in verse 4. These are scoffers. These are people who are saying, oh man, that's crazy. Why, how you get hooked up in stuff like this? You know. And I, and I heard that. Verse 4 saying, and saying, where is the coming? Of, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they are willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. That's the first earth. That's in Genesis chapter 1. That's why you see the earth was void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Peter is telling them that particular one perished. Goes on to say in verse 6, whereby the world that then was, being no full with water, perished. Verse 7, by the he but the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as much, some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, with, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This is my question. Seeing then that these things are to be dissolved, the question is, what manner of person ought you to be? In all holding this conversation and godliness, looking for that hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Now, one of the things that we can really understand, brothers and sisters, the question being, what manner of person are you? You know that this earth going to pass away. We can see lava. It was spewed out, you know, you know, burning rock and stuff like that. That's just a little example of what God is capable of doing. But the heavens are going to be melted away with a fervent heat. And the earth also, question, what manner a person ought I to be? I think I need to reflect on what God is telling me. See, God created us 
but he is also telling us that I have the right. I have the right not only just to uh, create, but I also have the right to destroy. And that's one of the things that I'm saying to you. You don't have to be destroyed. You do not have to go to hell. You do not have to do that. God has made a way for us to have fellowship with him throughout eternity. Isn't that wonderful? Even the psalmist said, what is man that you mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. You made him a little lower than the angels, but you crowned him with glory and honor. Brothers and sisters, we are unique to God. And the devil wants you to think that you ain't nobody. Brothers and sisters, there's no such thing as an illegitimate child with God. God has made us. Everybody in here has a purpose. And that purpose is to serve and worship God. And I hope you take the time to repent and ask God to help you. Everybody needs some help. Everybody. Don't think that you don't. Now when you go through tests and trials, you got to pray and ask God for some wisdom. Because again, we all trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And God will direct you your path. I'm doing it every day now. God, just give me some, give me some direction. What should I be doing? I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go. Some, uh, it's, it's too much trouble I'm going through right now. I want to go to a better place. And God says, I got a better place for you. In my father's house. So there are many mansions. If it were not so, I told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. God got a place for you, brothers and sisters. He got a place for you. You don't have to live in sin. You can be victorious and all of that, but you can enjoy the abundant life. And if you're here today, I will hope that you've heard the message. Because God is saying this, now is you, your time to make a choice. You can choose this day who you're going to serve. It's up to you. You know that's the most powerful thing on this planet, is the ability to make choices. You know, advertisers know that the only way that they can really, really get you to buy things is that they advertise. Why? Because you have a choice. You have a choice to make. And they use that, your ability to make a choice, to really, really influence their products and things of that nature. And God is saying, I'm giving you a choice. Choose life or you can choose death. If you choose death, that means that you have ignored God's plea for you to come. Come all you that labor and are heavy laden. I give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Meek and lowly in the heart, you'll find rest for your soul. If you're here today and you don't know God in the pardon of your sin, now is your time. Now is your time. Now is your time. You have the ability to make the choice, an eternal choice, a choice that can't nobody get you to fall and to fail but you. Let's give God a hand praise for those who are coming. Amen. We give God praise. It is so important to make the right choice. I like to see families come together. When you're making a choice, a choice to serve God, to live eternally with him, that is a blessing. It is a blessing. To live where he's going to take us, brothers and sisters, it's just a beautiful thing. And know that God is still on the throne. And he's telling us to come. Come to him. All you that labor. Every year when you're troubled, when you're heavy laden, you can come to God. God gives you an opportunity to make the choices that will be a blessing to you and your family. That's what Joshua said. As for me and my family, we are going to choose God. I'm so glad that I made Jesus my choice. Yes, some folks would rather have houses 
Ellen, some folks they choose silver and gold. Oh, these things that they treasure and forget about their souls. I've decided to make Jesus my choice. I don't know about you. Oh, the road gets rough and the going gets tough. <laughs> Sometimes hills are hard to climb. Oh, but I started out a long time ago. And there's no doubt in my mind I decided to make Jesus my choice. Hallelujah. Glory. Ooh. Some folks... <laughs> Would rather have houses and land. Oh, some folks choose silver and gold. These things that they, they treasure, these things that they treasure and forget about their soul. I've decided to be Jesus my choice. What about you? you should, have you decided to make Jesus your choice? The road will get rough. It's rough. Yeah, the going gets tough sometimes. Going gets tough. Yes. And those hills are hard to climb. But I started out. I started out a long time ago. There's no doubt. There's no doubt in my mind I've decided to make Jesus oh my choice hallelujah bless God almighty oh the road gets me rough I can witness to that and the going gets tough. Yes, those hills hard to climb. But I've started out a long time ago, about 46 years now. There's no doubt in my mind I've decided to make Jesus my choice that's one other song I like you can't make me doubt him you can't make me doubt him you can't make me doubt him in my heart Oh, you can't make me doubt it Cause I know too much about it Oh, you can't make me doubt it in my heart I feel more determined now I feel more determined Yes, I feel more determined Church, I feel more determined 
in my heart. Oh, I feel more determined. Yes, I feel more determined. Yes, I feel more determined in my heart. That's why you can't make me doubt him. Oh, you can't make me doubt him. No, no, you can't. No, oh, you can't make me down in my heart. Well, you can't make me down cause I do much about Well, you can't make me down in my heart. Well, I got the Holy Ghost. See, I've got the Holy Ghost. Yes, I've got the Holy Ghost. Well, I've got the Holy Ghost. In my heart, well, I've got the Holy Ghost. Yes, I've got the Holy Ghost. Well, I've got the Holy Ghost in my heart. That's why you can't make me doubt it. You can't make me doubt it. No, no, you can't. No, 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 you can't make me doubt it. In my heart. Shall we all stand? You can't cause I Oh, you can't make me doubt in my heart. Help me say that one more time. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. No, no, you can't make me doubt him. Church, you can't make me doubt him. In my heart. Oh, you can't Cause I know Oh, you can't Hallelujah Hallelujah What a word, what a word, what a word Hallelujah Give God praise for that word Hallelujah And if you didn't write it down Go to YouTube, go to Facebook Pull it back up and listen to it again. Hallelujah. Woo, I thank God for our teachers and our leaders. God has really blessed the house of prayer. Amen. Couple of quick announcements. I won't keep you long. This is a card. There is a way of selfless serving that has special greatness. Though often overlooked by man, it would never be overlooked by God. Amen. Um, thank you, thanking him for you. I'm honored and blessed to be a part of this spiritual family. No words can express how grateful I am for the love you have shown to me and my family during the time of bereavement. Um, thank you. And this is for, from Marshane, I'm sorry, from Shane. And this is from the family of uh, L.C. Sandridge. From the family of L.C. Sandridge. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. So give God a hand, praise for loving on his people. Hallelujah. One other announcement. Our Women's Day is vastly approaching. Amen. It's the Women's Weekend. It starts on May 17th through the 19th. Friday night prayer from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Saturday Women's Conference from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Food will be served. And Sunday morning worship at 11.15. We are going to have a great time. We want you all to invite people. We will have flyers really soon. So please make sure you have ordered your T-shirts and given Sister Barbara or Minister Roberta your $15. The money will be due on May 1st. Our Women's Annual Dude shall, is, should be paid by May 15th. See Sister Barbara, Ivy, or Minister Roberta, if you have any funds to give today. And please, please, please invite someone to this service. Amen. Please invite someone. Thank you. Any questions, see Minister Roberta. Uh, Minister Roberta, can you wave your hand or stand up and let them know who you are? Any questions? She's our leader for our women's department. Give God praise. We thank you for your, your time, and you have an awesome day. It's beautiful outside. Make sure you get some vitamin D. Amen? <laughs> vitamin D. Go out in the sun. <laughs> stand with me. Everybody stand so we can dismiss from this place, but never, ever, ever from his presence. 
Because he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Your hands raised. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Go in peace and love on one another. I love you, Dayhop.